To kick off our discussion of the Odyssey, though, we are going to recap Odysseus's journey as he's telling it to the Phaeacians. Um, and we are so we're going to start with ten years ago. Ten years ago, Odysseus left Troy and sailed across the channel to the Sicanes. When he left Troy, he had um, 12 ships with 200 men each. So those of you playing the home game, that's 2,400 men. Um, he and his men sailed across the channel, like I said, to the Sicanese. At the Sicanese, his men grew super greedy and decided to sack the city and get more treasure. Um, with uh, that increased greed, uh, they stayed too long at the Sicanese trying to get more and more treasure and they ended up getting into a battle there, and they lost six men per ship, or 72 men. So from Troy to the Sicanese, from the Sicanese, they sailed down to the land of the Lotus Eaters. Now, if you guys remember, the Lotus Eaters were the people who cared about nothing besides eating this plant that made them really lazy and only want to eat the plant. So this is like an opiate. Um, miraculously, Odysseus doesn't lose anybody to the Lotus Eaters. They manage to haul everybody off of the um, land of the Od Lotus Eaters and get back out to sea. After that, they sail to the island of the Cyclops. And that's where Odysseus runs into Polyphemus. He goes to the cave of the Cyclops, Polyphemus, Asking for hospitality. Remember, hospitality is one of the big ideas that we're focusing on here. And instead of giving hospitality, Polyphemus rolls a rock in front of the cave, grabs two of Odysseus's men, smashes their heads against the ground, and eats them. So this is an example of bad hospitality. Um, in the morning, he does the same thing. He has two more of Odysseus's men for breakfast. <laughs> and my cameraman's making me laugh. In the morning, he does the same thing. He has two more of Odysseus's men for breakfast. He rolls the rock out of the way. He goes off into the fields and um, does what he needs to do uh, to take care of his sheep. But he keeps the men locked up. So this is the second example of bad hospitality. He locks the men in place. So they're not free to leave, and he's killing them and eating them. Um... <laughs> He also, when he returns that evening, Odysseus has a plan. Um, after Polyphemus eats two more of his men, Odysseus gets him really drunk on a lot of wine and starts playing word games with him. When the Cyclops asks him what his name is, he says that it is No Man. And um, then Polyphemus passes out. Odysseus and his men make a spear from Polyphemus' walking stick and they jam it through his eye. Um, and when the other Cyclops ask what's going on, he says, no man is killing me, no man is killing me, and they think he's just um, too drunk, and they leave him alone. Um, the next morning, Odysseus and his men sneak out of the cave, and they're about to make a clean break for their ships, but while they are in the harbor, um, Odysseus can't help yelling back, Hey, you big dummy! In case anybody ever wants to know who blinded you, it was Odysseus, son of Laertes, of Ithaca. And Polyphemus is the son of a god. Polyphemus is the son of Poseidon. So Polyphemus now knows who to ask his dad to blame, who to ask his dad to punish. So Polyphemus says, Hey, dad, can you please A, recognize that I'm your son, and B, can you punish this guy? This is supposedly the reason why Odysseus has trouble for the next 10 years. Um, if you were paying attention, um, Odysseus lost six men on the island of the Cyclops. Six men on the island of the oh, Cyclops. No. All right. So... Um, after that, he is down to 2,322 men. Uh, they next sail to the land of Aeolus. So they're from the island of Cy the Cyclops. They sail to the island of Aeolus. Aeolus has this rich, beautiful land. Um, and he gives them a gift of a whole bunch of wings, 
or sorry, a whole bunch of wins in the bat in a bag, and these wins almost take them back to Ithaca. But the men grow really greedy, and you'll notice there's a theme to Odysseus's men. They grow really greedy, and they don't trust Odysseus. And while Odysseus is asleep, they open up the bag of the winds, and they so they go from right here, being able to see the fires of Ithaca, the smoke from the fires of Ithaca, and they're blown back to the island of Aeolus. Aeolus, at this point, won't help them, says, I don't know what you did, but you've done something to really tick off the gods. So I got nothing to do with you. And they have to row away from the island of Aeolus. They row all the way across this expanse of ocean to the Lastragonians. And the Lastragonians appear at first to be people who are going to practice the rules of hospitality. The princess of the Lastragonians is going to take Odysseus's men um, to her parents. And while they are there, um, they meet the king and the queen, who happen to be giants. In this case... These are bad giants. And one of the men is grabbed and eaten right away, again, with the bad hospitality. And the other um, scouts get away and try to make it to the ships, but all of the last Dragonians start throwing rocks at them and manage to take out all of Odysseus's fleet except for one remaining ship. So if you're keeping track of the body count at this point, he has now lost 2,128 men in one attack, and it brings his crew down to 194. All right. So, so he's right here at the island of the Lastragonians. His one remaining ship sails around the Cape and up to the island of Circe. At the landing place on the island of Circe, um, he sends again a scouting party out, um, to figure out who's in this house that they can see. When they when the men see the house, all but one of them, Eurylochus, go running into the house, and Circe welcomes them and promptly drugs them and turns them into pigs. Um, this, for some, is not such a drastic transformation as it might have been for others, but um, the men are enchanted. So Eurylochus goes running back to the ship and says, Hey, Odysseus, this thing just happened. We have to rescue our men. Odysseus goes off on his own because no one will go with him, and he runs into Hermes. Hermes tells him how to trick Circe into being, um, uh, into a binding oath so she can't hurt him. And he does that, and then forces her to also transform his men back into humans. After that, she says, okay, you've got me. I can't hurt you. Why don't you guys stay here? And so they do, for a year. Right before they're about to leave, Odysseus approaches Circe and says, okay, it's time for us to go. We really need to get home to Ithaca. And she says, that's great, but before you do that, the gods have told me there's someplace else you need to go. You need to go to the land of the dead. And so they're partying really hard that night before they go to the land of the dead. And the youngest among them, Elpinor, drank too much, climbed up on the roof, and fell asleep. In his sleep, he rolled off the roof, and, um, and he died. The men didn't even notice that when they sailed away the next day, but their crew was down to 193. So they're up here at the island of Circe, and they sail into the land of the dead. While they're in the land of the dead, Odysseus has two goals. One is he wants to see his mother, who died while he was away. Um, and another is he wants to see this um, specific prophet named Tiresias. But what they don't expect is to run into Elpinor. They, just as they're crossing into the land of the dead, they run into Elpinor's ghost. And Elpinor says, hey, guys, I'm dead. 
and his crewmates say, you're dead? Really? And he says, yeah, I'm dead, and you guys need to mourn me. So this, so they know they have to go back to Cersei's Island after this and bury him. And that's going to be really important um, because of what has to come next.